So there's two things that the Holy Spirit spoke to me today in the morning and while we were worshipping God. So I want, to, I want to say what the Holy Spirit has put in my heart and prompted me. The first thing, I'll come to the first thing a little later first. Um, while we were worshipping God, God put in my heart to say, I said, Lord, do you want me to say it? Because, you know, I am very careful what I say when I say it comes from the Lord, because I have to be absolutely sure. And God said, why are you doubting me? I said, okay, I'm sorry, Lord, I'll not doubt you. God told me, he gave me two words, and he gave me this word called, it's done. It's done. I said, my Lord, what does it mean it's done? I mean, you know, if I say to the church, it's done, I mean, it's a very general term, no? It is done. It will be done in your life, what you're praying for, a supernatural breakthrough. God, God gave me a time, a time frame. God told me 10 days. How many days? Now, I don't know. Don't, don't break your head. What is the spiritual meaning of 10 and all that? I, I don't know what that means, but then God told me, 10 days, it's done. Now, any one of you, or a, a, no matter the church member sitting over here, if you find this miracle happen in your life, after 10 days, come and testify. Talk about God's goodness. Okay? Testify. 10 days, what the Spirit of God told me, it's done. The second thing that the Holy Spirit told me this morning, while I was, you know, praying and seeking God, God was showing me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now hear me very carefully. I said, Lord, I want a confirmation. Today when we worship God, Lord, you give me the exact three words that you want me to say this and do this activity. I made some chits, okay, and uh, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before we do the word. And God told me that uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, open everyone, open your Bible. I hope you're carrying your Bible to church. Please carry your physical Bible to church. We do not encourage online Bible, mobile phones, not in the church. You can do it at home in your office, that's up to you. But when you're coming to church, you must carry your Bible. Husband, wife, you, you can't share one Bible. I know you all two are one. But don't share one Bible here. Yeah? You need to have individual Bibles. All of you should carry one one Bible in your bag. Now, you, there is no restriction. It should be a big Bible, a fat Bible, an expensive Bible. Any Bible is okay. But you have to carry a Bible with you when you come to church. Cultivate this habit, carry a Bible to church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 was uh, was 7 8 and 9 and 10 it says over there and there are diversities of all activities but it's the same god which works all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all S to the one is given the word of wisdom to the through the spirit to to the other, the word of knowledge to the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All the same spirit, all the same spirit, but the manifestations are various. Various manifestation. This is given for the church. This is given for the edification of the church. When we come together and we worship God, every one of you should eagerly desire for spiritual gifts. Verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 31, Paul says, But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And then he goes on to talk about the practical character that God is looking for. So, how many gifts are there in this, in this passage? 
have you all all do you all all know what's your gift because if you don't know you're running blind you are not concerned about what i want to do for god not for god but for the church actually these gifts are not for god huh, by the way these gifts are for the church edification of the church understand that if you don't have a gift that means you're not thinking about the church you may be thinking but pastor it is god to decide to give or not to give but also god is going to check your desire what is your desire which is the gift you want and i'm going to do an activity today um david just come here sachin you you give in this row give one each to everyone uh, everyone will take one chit i'm giving you okay um even give it to the pa system guys the people in the front as well everyone husband wife will take every one each one i want individual chits if the chits are short we'll get no more chits that's fine but everyone will 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 take one chit and i will tell you what you have to do god has given me a task last about 3 months i think we've been talking about the holy spirit i've seen and i'm watching the manifestation of the holy spirit in the lives of families i see the attack of the devil very very active when we are talking about the holy spirit because he knows what we are getting into is a very powerful aspect in the kingdom of god all these chit that every one of you has you will not put your name i don't want i'm not interested in your name i am not interested i don't want to know who's put it what i don't want to know what you will do is that you have 1 corinthians 12 in front of you you will go through the ninth gift and you will seek and say lord lord give me the word of wisdom for the edification of your church i maybe you don't have it right now and if you have already identified your gift then put the same gift on that piece of paper and you need to understand if you have the gift but you are not using it for the edification of the church you have dishonored god i'm using very very critical words over here hear me out very carefully you cannot take a gift and store it in your house in this context when this gift is given to each one all of you should reveal that gift you got to un wrap got to open the wrapper and you got to see the gift and you got to edify the church if you have not been doing that you are not allowing the holy spirit to work in your life although you say that the holy spirit is in us and with us but you are not doing it actually it's it, we are just kind of a church coming to church going to church just naam ke liye but we have to work in the kingdom of god right and god will equip you to build his church god will never send his child without any without equipping him god will always equip you for the church it's like you know when you're in your office no when you're working then you look at igps okay how do i prepare myself okay i will do this short term course and then you will not only do it and hide it but you will tell your manager right that you know what i'm doing it remember me in the next igp okay apply this in the next project give me a project i want to apply you will see whether i can do it or not how you do all those mehnat you do same thing in the kingdom of god if you don't do this in the kingdom of god i'm telling you your your existence to be in the church is as good as zero you might say but pastor i'm not talking about love and joy and all that right now i'm not the fruit of the spirit has to be evident it is needless for me to say jesus says every tree shall be known by its fruit if you have if you got hatred issues anger issues revenge covetousness and 
and all the impurities, the unholiness, all this, that you have to change because that is not how the Holy Spirit dwells in us and then we give out unfruitful things in our lives. Especially how we are with our family, how we are with our wife, with our husband, with our children, with our elders. How do you speak to them on a regular basis? Do you take each other casual? Do you, don't, do you, do you disrespect each other? So we, we, we got to be careful on, in terms of the fruit of the Spirit. But this chit I have given you, I want all of you, at least if you don't have one, pray, ask the Lord, Lord, let me choose any one of them. You don't have to be, you know, wondering, Lord, you show me the gift. No, 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 no. You desire one first. You desire one. Because the Bible says God will grant. It is God who will give. God will decide if this gift is apt for you. So I want all to write your gift in that piece of paper. Fold it after you write it. Okay. Do we have some plastic bags? Any plastic bags? Empty bags? I want to I want to have you to keep uh -huh. yeah, that is fine. Anything is fine. David, you can take it from Sister Ranjani, that bag. Sister, that bag is not coming back to you. Huh? I'm taking it home. Now, I, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to collect all these gifts that you have written, and I'm going to fast and pray for you all. That is what God has given me a task. I, I thought it will be a good thing, but God is giving me more to do. You've got to fast and pray. And I'm going to fast and pray for every single chit in the bag. I'm going to read it every day. I'm going to pray fast that, Lord, you grant this gift. While I'm also going to do that, I want you to also think about the gift that you have written. You're not written because I told you, because there are nine, right? So I'm not, I'm not directing you to anyone. But you got to pick one and you got to stick to that. And you got to pray every day, Lord, how, what do I do to receive the gift? You have to ask that question. What do I do to receive the gift? Why? Because I don't want to use that gift in my family. I want to use it in the church to edify the church. If you're looking at interpretation of tongues, only one gift. Only one gift for now. I know you may have many more. First one. Because I want to see at least that one gift getting edified. Some people, put, uh, some people have this thought that I'll put six, seven gifts. But you're not using any one. In the, not even one you're using in the church. Gift of tongues is for edification of self. I'll repeat myself. Gift of tongues is the edification for you, for you, yourself. So if you have a desire to speak in tongues, put that gift, no problem. So that will be edification for yourself. But if you want the gift of interpretation of tongues, that is for the edification of the church. Lord, I want this gift, Lord God. So what God is going to do? When God is giving you the interpretation of tongues, the gift, God is going to enable someone else to speak in tongues. And God is purposefully going to allow that person to speak in tongues in the congregation. Why? Because the gift that is the interpretation of tongues gift that is given to that brother or sister, that person will interpret. He'll come in the front and say, you know what? God just showed me what he was talking or he was talking. And that will be for the edification of the church. Remember, it's only for the gift of interpretation of tongues is for edification of the church. And one gift from that, that is gift of tongues, is edification for yourself. Now comes my next question. So what you'll do, you will find out what should I do to receive this gift. And if you think I need to get trained what do I do? 
how do I behave myself? What is the things I have to remember if I, if I get this gift? What is this gift all about? You can call me. You can let me know anytime during the week, during the whole month, the whole year. Fix a time with me. We'll sit down and I will train you on that gift. I will do a personal training with you on that gift in the church. Eh? Got it? Yeah? So, of course, depending on your number of the, the gift that's mentioned on the chit, I'm going to go through, I'm going to mention how many people want how this, which gifts, and if there are maximum people wanting a particular gift, then maybe I will train it in the church only for all of you. So, have you written down? While I'm talking, you might have written down everyone. David? So, please don't put empty chits. Please. Don't do that. God will not be pleased if you put empty chits. You will say, Pastor, but I don't have the faith to pick one gift. Why you don't have faith? You don't need faith to pick a gift. You need a desire that I want to do this in the church. Wow, what is this? I want to do it. That's all you need to have. You need to put it. The teenagers, don't think yourself as lesser. Any gift you want, pick. God will give it. Don't think yourself low. Never think yourself low. You might say, but pastor, I don't even come to church. No problem, put a gift. God will enable you to come every Sunday to church. Because if you don't come to church, where are you going to edify? <laughs> How are you going to use the gift? So God is going to move some closed doors, going to open doors for you, so that those gifts can be used for the edification of the church. Yes, Priscilla? Only one. Only one. Choose any, mini, minor, more. Choose anyone. I'll tell you one thing, church. We only start with one. God can give you everything. It is God's, it is God's uh, will, by the way. Huh? It is not my will. It is not your will. It is God's. God will decide whether you want, well, He wants to give you two, three, four, but right now, as per the agenda and the, uh, the instruction of God, God has asked me to put only one gift. Put one gift on the chit for now. Put one gift on the chit. And fold it. Don't worry, your name is not there, so it's no one knows who's who. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? Um, so, David, can you go, go around and pick those chits up? So, we were talking about, uh, while David is doing that, focus on the word now. The, uh, while we were talking last Sunday, we were talking about what? The spirit of might. Has anyone experienced the spirit of might, the manifestation last week? One person. Who else? Two. Who else? Three, four, five, six. Praise God. You will see more manifestations coming up. I'm telling you, if you focus, it is not, it is not a human thing. It is a godly thing. It is God who brings in His will in your life to build His kingdom. It is not for our own glory. It is not for self-glorification. It is for glorifying God. Isaiah 11.2, can we open that verse? Let's go back to the root verse that we started off, okay? Uh, the root verse. Thank you, Father. So, it says over here, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Which ones we have till now covered? Yeah, we, uh, we are still yet to finish control. We finish the rest. Might, might we did last Sunday. Little bit, I just will end, we'll do a clothing of that and then we'll move to council today. Today I want to finish the spirit of council. I want to start something new. God, is, God has shown me something new to speak to all of you. But uh, before that, uh, this is what you got to remember. Gift of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, fruit, singular, fruit of the Holy Spirit, and the seven 
ministries of the Holy Spirit that is ministered not to seven different people, but it can be ministered to that one person. You see, there are seven over here. Same spirit, huh? Like how we read in 1 Corinthians 12. Different gifts, but the same spirit. One spirit. And that spirit is in you and me. Amen. We are so powerful today, church, because of the Holy Spirit. I'm always sticking to this point. And I'm, I'm seeing so many things. I'm enjoying so many things in the spiritual realm in this week. I'm just enjoying when I'm spending time. Because God is sure. When you give yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you take over. I want you to lead me. I want you to prompt me. Okay, if you, like for example, like what I said in the morning, I said, Lord, if you want me to do this activity, you confirm it. And just then, Brother Alan, in his offering song, he mentioned gift. He did not say anything. He just said gift of the Holy Spirit. I said, how did he say that? God has confirmed. God will confirm his word. You cannot be in doubt. Keep it, um, keep it in your, my bag. Inside my bag. Okay, and you cannot be in doubt. You cannot be in, in fear. God's children should stop doubting the word of God. If you pray and you feel in the spirit that the spirit of God is prompting you and you're not sure about it, don't worry. If you're sure about it, great. In case you are not sure about it, because you are thinking, Yar, I am not spent only time for the last three days in the Lord. How can God speak to me all of a sudden? Yes, your doubt is valid. So what you got to do, Lord, you confirm your word with your servants. And don't share it with anyone. Keep it with you. And God will confirm it to the same verse, the same scripture. Whatever God has told you, revealed to you, He will reveal it to you again and confirm his word. And uh, the spirit of might, last time we spoke about some uh, uh, seven or uh, ten, or rather what, how many, eight, eight things, how to wait upon the Lord. What was our memory was Isaiah 41? 40, 31. Do you know the verse by heart? Faith, those who... Some of your mouth are zipped. You got to remember this verse, everyone. Church, hello. You got to remember, you want to be a church-going Christian or you want to be a scripture-confessing Christian? I think scripture-confessing scripture is more powerful. Hallelujah. You have to learn to wait. The children of God must learn to wait. And this is the most difficult thing ever for a Christian person. Forget, I'm not talking about non-Christians. I'm talking about Christian person. Very difficult to wait. Because your human feelings will not allow you to wait. You will give up. You will get frustrated. You will get irritated. You will get insecure. You will get worried. How much to wait, Lord? I can't wait. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for one day. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for one week. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for one month. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for one year. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for 10 years. Maybe the Lord will make you wait for 50 years. Now you may say, but this is too much. It is. But I'll tell you what. My God is a great God. He knows when you will require it and what is the right time. But you got to wait. Now, how do you wait? I told you last time. Some uh, Very quickly, I will go to this because I want to connect this to my the next uh, topic. I told you last time, uh, how do you wait? If you want to wait upon the Lord, what are the uh, characters that or other attitudes that you must have in order to, to have a proper godly waiting on the Lord? Number one, I told you patience. You have to have patience. Number two, I told you trusting. I'm not going in details. Number three, I told you hoping. You got to hope, hope in the Lord. Number four is seeking. You got to seek Him. Number five is acknowledging. Number six is refraining from fear and anxiety. So when you're waiting upon the Lord, you cannot be fearful 
and worried. Otherwise, your whole exercise of waiting on the Lord has failed. Then I told you, continuing to obey God's word. Every day, when you read the word of God, when God is giving you simple uh, real life applications to follow every day, you have to be careful in obeying God's commandments. When you're going to office, when you have some people with different weird thoughts and ungodly thoughts, you have to make sure that you're not agreeing with anything ungodly. Because you have to say and stand firm in the promises of God. Okay, so continuing to obey. So you can wait upon the Lord for maybe one, two months, but you're disobeying God's word. So what is the point of you waiting then? So you've got to continue obey God's word. And number eight, I told you, depending on the Holy Spirit. Every day when you finish your waiting time, you move out of the closet, prayer closet, you start your work day, you have your breakfast, you know, you have talked with the family, you leave for work, you go to work, you spend time with your office friends at work, you're doing your professional task, your targets, you're finishing your work, you're always depending on the Holy. You're coming back, you are you are got stuck in traffic for two hours, three hours, don't worry, I will still depend on the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm very frustrated. God knows you're frustrated when you get stuck in certain things and you don't want to be there. God understands that. So we've got to make sure that we do not express that in the flesh. Always remember this. Flesh, spirit. Flesh, spirit. Flesh, spirit. So, when you walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you the things of the spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you the things of God. When you walk in the flesh, you cannot get to know the things of God. You will not know what God has in store for you because you are walking in the flesh. And if you are walking in the flesh and you are hearing from God, that is not God. I will repeat it again. If you are walking in the flesh, and you are hearing from God, that is deception. Sorry to offend you, but that's deception. If I am sinning against, if I sin against God, but I have heard from God, that's not from, the, from, the, from God. It could be either from the devil or from your own flesh. I told you, you know, I think I spoke to you about this topic. Three voices a Christian can hear. One is God's voice. Don't say husband and wife's voice now. Yeah, husband's voice. Huh? No, no, there is no place for that. It says first, when I said no place, I don't mean disrespect. Huh? Otherwise, you will come to me saying that. How can you say that? How can you say that? No. One is when you pray God's voice, the devil's voice, and our own voice. Man's voice, well, whatever. Whoever prays. So you need to figure out and identify whose voice it is. Okay, when you how do I, how do I identify, Pastor, whose voice it is? Very simple. If you are obeying God's commandment, you are not sinning against God. You are setting an example of Christ. People are looking at you, and they know that Jesus is there in your life. You are doing everything okay, and when you hear a voice. That is 100% from the Lord. Don't doubt. The devil is going to put use all his might. Huh? See, the devil will use all his might to fool you. To put guilt in your heart. To put condemnation in your heart. To remind you of your past sins. To remind you of your past failures. The devil will do everything to crowd your thoughts. So that you will not be focused on what... What God actually told you. And you are looking at the whole thoughts in your mind. So you've got to be careful. You've got to stop all that. You've got to say, I rebuke you all these evil thoughts in the name of Jesus. If I am walking according to the word of God, I am doing what God wants me to do. I am in the center of God's purpose. Then I can only hear one voice. And that is the voice of God. And that's what the Holy Spirit will do. 
That's what the Holy Spirit do. I think, you know, waiting upon the Lord, I, I feel it's more in intimacy. It's having an intimate relationship with God. Having a close relationship with God. I told you uh, in, in my teaching sessions, I keep my praying and fasting teaching sessions, I keep telling this that when you pray, when you pray, what do you do? You talk. Yes, no? You talk. And then what the next thing you do? You yeah, you have to hear. You can't keep talking. You have to keep quiet sometimes when you pray because God wants to communicate with you back. But if you keep talking, 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 then you'll say, I did not hear the voice of God. How will you hear the voice of God when you're just talking? Many people ask me, Are you, do, you, do you stop and hear? No, I don't. I just keep talking. Then how will God talk then? God will not over talk. What you are saying, God will not say over that something to you. You will not be able to hear the voice of God. If you are saying, Pastor, every day I pray, but I can't, I am saying everyone should hear God's voice every day. Say Amen, no? I know you don't believe me, you think, oh, this is impossible. Yeah? Some of you think it's impossible, I can't hear from God. Why you can't hear? My question is to you, why do you say that? Because you don't know how to hear from the Lord. So I would say in your prayer time, if you are spending one hour in prayer every day, 30 minutes, you worship God, praise. 30 minutes, keep your mouth shut, sit down quietly in the presence of God. Now what I am telling you is also very difficult. Because people don't have the patience to do that. You will say, but pastor, I have to go to work, I have to get ready, I have to move. I said, get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Some people, told, one person told me, Pastor, I have to get up at 4 to get ready. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Fair enough? Fair enough? That's not very tough, right? You want to hear from God, right? Then do some. Some people want to hear from God without doing any hard work. But comfortably, they will put their leg on the table, Lord, I'm hearing from you. Sometimes people get up very nicely in the morning, comfortable. No, no stress in their life. Say, no stress. No stress. I'll get up, aram, say. Because I have a lot of time, full day. Then I have to go to work later. Aram, say, I'll sit in. Aram, say, I'll talk to God. Aram, say, I will hear from God. I'm sorry to tell you. Aram, say, nahi hota hai. It all depends on your attitude, right? How desperate are you to hear from God? What are you doing? God is looking how desperate and persistent this person is. I want to talk to him. No pain, no gain. That's what, that's what I heard somewhere. If you want to hear from God, take the trouble out here. Yeah. Don't be so lazy and such a... What is the word I forgot here? Yeah. Uh, don't be a spoiled brat. Don't be a spoiled, lazy. Me ko nahi sunne ka, me kuch bhi karega, apne aap karega. Isa nahi chalta hai. It doesn't work like that. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You are no longer of your own. You have given yourself to Christ. What God wants you to know. If I feel that, if I feel that I'm too comfortable, I'm really worried. Why am I so easily doing it? Lord, give me some more tough things, Lord. I always say that. It can't, Christian journey cannot be comfortable journey. I don't agree with this philosophy. Christian journey is all about the adventure of the kingdom of God. And it is filled with spiritual realms. Hallelujah. You like SL world? It's closed. But praise God, the adventure in the Holy Spirit will never shut down. Every day you will witness something great. Every day you will witness something great. Say Amen, no? Amen. You want to hear from God every day? So you need to have a desire, no church. I am saying that, but if you are saying, okay, big deal. Okay, yeah, okay, fine. You need to, from inside that desire should come, I want it, Lord. I want it, Lord. 
because we are the bride of Christ. I told you last time some examples. Uh, Gideon's testimony of his victory. We see, we learn that in Judges chapter 7 verse 2. How God in his might worked in the lives of the people of Israelites in battle. Sometimes God said, you will not do anything. You will just stand and watch. Can you imagine that? Here you have a giant enemy in front of you, marching towards you. God is saying to his people, just stand, put and watch. Because God in his mighty power will overcome. He doesn't need any help. Our God is a strong God. He doesn't need, he doesn't care what is there in front. If God wants to do it, just by his word, he will get it done. And you need to understand that that is what God is trying to teach us. Unless and until you do not depend wholly and solely on God. if Unless and until you have not surrendered completely to God. If you think, Lord, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop fidgeting, Lord. Every time you pray and then you do a lot of efforts, your human efforts to get it done and all this. God, I think, stop it. If you want me to come, you have to stop what you're doing. You have to stop. Put your weapons down. And just say, Lord, I'm sorry. My hands are back now, Lord. You take over. And see, when you do that, how God will start doing a miraculous thing in your life. What happened to the Red Sea? Exodus 14, 21 to 29. That's the whole passage. That how Moses heard from God. And what was the mighty power of God against the sorcery and the magicians of the e Egyptians. The Egyptian magic, they were really uh, huge magicians and they used to do great things. But they were not greater than the God of Israel. Are you worried about any curse in your life? Many Christians after they get saved, you know, they still feel, Pastor, that the Gao, the village, the curse is in my life in my life. It's wrong. It's not there. Every curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Every curse is broken in the name. There is nothing that can overtake you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What God blesses, He adds no trouble to it. And that is the might of God dividing the Red Sea. What happened to Jericho? Did they fight? Did they take a hammer and break the wall, the wall of Jericho? Joshua chapter 6, um, verse 1 to 27, the whole passage is there. Over oh, there, what happened? They only did some, what people thought, clumsy thing. Huh? People sometimes, when you walk in faith, no, other people make fun of you. They think you're very clumsy. You look at the Bible. <laughs> God has said some out of imagination things to men to do. Who is the person who was asked to dip the leper? To dip? Who dipped who? He dipped himself. in the, he, he was not willing because he had a lot of ego problems. You think, what is this here, Bachkunda? People will laugh at me. I am so big, what is this? He is going to go to the river. He is not going to go to the river. How many times? Seven times, Saat bar, ye, kya hai yaar. he was not willing to come out of his intellectual nonsense till the time he obeyed. Now, tell me one thing, church. What was the need of him to do seven times dubki? Tell me, God could not do it in one time. You, you agree what I'm saying? God told him to dip seven times, right? Why God told you? You think God's power will come in the seven time? Or God is, while he's doing dubki first time, second time, God is working somewhere, he's busy, then he'll come in the seventh time and he will, for miracle, clean. Because it is purely obedience to the word of God. We think the things of God, we think the plan of God, it is too unbelievable, inhuman, it's not possible or it is too clumsy. And the reason why you do keep thinking like that, the, because you do not believe in the power of God. You do not believe that God has told you to do. I mean, people laugh, let them laugh. Let them mock. 
I want to encourage you, do not disrespect God's instructions. When the Bible is telling to wait, it will look very funny. Your parents might tell you, your husband might tell you, your wife might tell you, your children might tell you, your uncle, your granny, your society friends, your, your other people might tell you, what if you wait, you lose the opportunity, you lose it. It's okay. God has asked me to wait, that's it. You might have files at home because of that. Why are you waiting? What's wrong with you? No, I cannot move ahead. I have to wait because I have to hear from God. If God gives you the permission, then if the whole world is against you, but if God has asked you to do it, it will be done. Hallelujah. So, you know, coming back to the spirit of might. What about uh, Jeho Jehoshaphat's victory against his enemy? Second Chronicles 20, 15, 22. Watch all this here. These people, they did nothing here. I mean, they were skilled, highly skilled uh, warriors, huh, by the way, some of them. What happened to David's victory at Ziklag? 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, 8. How can you forget about Deborah's victory? The prophetess Deborah, right? What she did, Judges chapter 4, 9. She has, whatever she heard from God, God was speaking through her mightily. Whew. And whatever she was saying, people used to follow her instructions. And then we see a breakthrough in the lives of people. There is no introduction to Samson. I still can't, I can't digest what all God did through him. I still cannot digest. If you talk, you ask me, no? If I, if I go to any house group and they, if I heard 100,000 times about Samson's life, I will eagerly wanting to hear what is, let me hear it again, because I can't, I just cannot. The kind of might God manifested through this man is tremendous. And one of the secrets of that might, I keep thinking about it, you know, God gave him strict instructions. You're going to be pure. And he gave some, I will not go into details, God gave him some mandate. You will not eat this, you will keep your law braided and all those, you know. He just followed. That's all he did. Can you beat that? He did not do anything like what Moses did going up in the mountains, getting the glory of God. Nothing he did. Nothing he did. God just told him simple instructions here. You have to follow. And he did. He made sure that he was pure. His parents made sure that he is following the word of God. And as long as he was obedient to those instructions, he was doing mighty things. Remember the fox, the jawbones? Can you imagine that? Have you seen any cartoon? You've not seen cartoon also because it's hard to imagine. How many foxes? I don't remember. I, do you remember? Uh, I think I put that down somewhere because how many? 300. Which, which verse is that? Yeah, Judges 15, 4 and 5. Can you read that, brother? <laughs> Forget about foxes. One fox. How many? He did not play. He caught. How many? 300 foxes. What he did after that? He ate or what? Cooked. What he did? It time, read, read, read. I'm very interested to know. I, I keep, I get very excited to hear what this man was to, uh, doing. When I first read this the first time, I was laughing. I was thinking I'm looking at some comedy stuff, you know. I was really, I could not, I was amazed. I could not believe what is happening. What he did? Then Samson went and caught three, not one, not two foxes. Anybody can catch a fox? Tell me the truth. Huh? Very fast. And they are not very smooth animals. Huh? They are not like a doggy. Aja, 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 aja. 
<laughs> they are foxes. I, I'm, I'm spending time because I I'm really want to let you know the what kind of might was manifesting. Unbelievable. He, he caught 300 foxes and he took torches. What is it? Tail. Tied it to the tail of the fox and put a torch between each pair of tails. He was running an army of foxes. I don't know how these foxes were submissive to him. I don't know how this happened. I know you must be thinking a lot. Tied a torch in, on the tail of the fox. Not one fox. How many? 300 fox. Oh my goodness. And I think, you know, Samson had no clue what he was doing because he was fearless. Why? Because when the spirit of might comes, you become fearless. You become, you become bold. You become strong. For the Lord, your God is with you. If God is for us, who can be against us? God will, God will make you do the impossible and the people around will see, oh my goodness, he has done something impossible. It is not you. It is the spirit of might. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you that we need to Always remember, if you want this to experience in your life, and everyone is going to experience this, I declare this in Jesus' name. You are all going to be mighty warriors for God. Not by your strength, huh? Never. It will never happen by your strength. Forget about it. Stop breaking your head on the wall. It's not going to happen. It will only happen by the spirit of might. And the key to this is in Isaiah 40, 31. That's the key. The key is that you must learn to wait. It's a very hard thing. But if anybody in this church is successful in waiting upon the Lord, you will begin to see unbelievable victories upon your life. Spirit of counsel. According to John chapter 14 verse 26. I'm out of time. But John 14 verse 26. We'll start off. I'll give you a little introduction. John 14. Can somebody pick up? Is there in the verse? John 14, verse 26. And you, yeah. When the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will remind you of everything I said to you. In the NKJV version, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you what? All things, if they all. You will not be dumb Christians. Huh? Because the Holy Spirit is in you. He will teach you all things. Even in your office, if you find something too high funda stuff, you cannot understand. You got to depend on the Holy Spirit. God, this is very complicating. The PhD guys and the MBA guys are doing it. What am I? Who am I? God said, I'll tell you who are you. Do you believe who I am? God is saying first. You're, when you're asking God, who am I? God is asking, do you know who I am? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The problem is that you don't know and you cannot measure the power of God in your life. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He can do the unbelievable thing in your life. Not to please you or to make you happy or to boast around, oh, God has done this. No, it's because you have to use that for the extension of the kingdom of God. He will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance, all things that I said to you. Can that be possible? Remembrance, all things. The Holy Spirit will remember all things that are, how I said to you, what does it mean I said to you? Through the word of God. It's the word of God, right? How do you know what God has spoken to the word? So when you are reading God's word, you will not forget. You will remember any situation you are going through your life, any storms you are going through your life, every storm God will show you his word. You will say, how do I know it? The Holy Spirit will remind you. How can the Holy Spirit remind you? Because you have meditated on those verses. Many Christians are looking for a word from God, but they have not read the word. They don't know anything. They are just talking, 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 talking. But you got to meditate on the law of God day and night. That is when the Holy Spirit will remind you of all those verses. We have learned till now 51 memory verses. And I can challenge you by faith 
that if you know all the 51 verses, you watch and see how the Holy Spirit will start ministering. Because He will remind you of the Word of God. He will talk to you in the Spirit when you are stuck in your workplace, there is pressure or there is some problem in the road or some problem in the family. The Holy Spirit remind you those verses. Lord, you said it, Lord. I remember your verse. I remember the Holy Spirit. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. I remember now. And you say those verses. You declare it out of your mouth. It shall produce fruits. The words that you release out of your mouth shall not return void unless and until it accomplishes its purpose. The Hebrew word in this word, helper or counselor, the Hebrew word is, uh, the concept of counselor is Esa. E-S-A-H which adds purpose or plan to the definition. It is both used in God's counsel and in human counsel, this word Isa. There is another word in Greek word, it's called paraklet or paraklos or parakletos, sorry. Yeah, there is another Greek word, I think you all know this, yeah, I'm just kind of refreshing your memories. And the Greek word Jesus used is to a person who came alongside it, it means it's translated into various words, like we learned one over your helper. There's another word, counselor, advocate, comforter, intercessor, strengthener, and standby. These are all the meaning of the word paraclete in the Greek word. When Jesus put the word, but the helper, the Greek word has given a broader extension of what that means to us in our life. It means that wherever you go, when, which, what, I don't care what is the problem in your life, the Holy Spirit will rescue you. If you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 9, 6 they also says that our Jesus is the counselor, the prince of peace, the counselor. That's a, that's a prophet Isaiah prophesied this. What happened to all the battles uh, one is the might and second is people uh, paid heed to the counsel of godly men. This is very important. Hear me out. In 2 Chronicles 20, 50 to 17, Jehoshaphat's victory was not just a victory. He was counseled what needs to be done. And God speaks through situations. When you are stuck, no church, always seek counsel. Everybody say counsel. Seek counsel. Don't go blank here. Yeah. Ask Lord, oh, what do you want me to do? Ask God, what do you want me to do, Lord? Some people say, Pastor, is it correct to take counsel from people? It is good to take counsel from godly people. And you know, the, the, I like this thing. When you, the, I, I know somebody who, who had taken counsel for three, four people, and three, four people gave the same verse. Confirmed the same verse. That is the beauty of counseling. But you've got to seek counsel because victory in your life is extremely critical. That will not come without counsel. You've got to always accept counsel. Uh, you see God's counsel over Moses. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 to 16. I'm giving you this passage. Please go home and read. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 to 16. God counseled Moses. This is what you do. Moses listened to the counsel of God. Many people know the counsel of God, but they don't want to listen. They will do ultimately what they think is right. No, 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 you can't trust your own thoughts. You've got to trust in God. I, Isaac, what counsel? Uh, Genesis 26, verse 3 and verse 4. There's another counsel that God gave Isaac. And Isaac listened. See, I'll tell you, all these counsels that God is speaking to people... The servants of God, the children of God, listen to counsel. You've got to be willing to listen. Don't be adamant. Don't be stubborn. Don't be egoistic. Don't think that I know everything. Why will I listen? God, wrong, wrong, wrong attitude. Wrong attitude. You've got to listen to counsel. Not only godly counsel, but also people with godly, giving you godly counsel. You've got to listen. You have to take it seriously. Isaiah 30 verse 21. This verse we will read. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Quickly. Isaiah 30 verse. How does the spirit of counsel talk to you? Let's understand that. 
how does he talk? Your, your, the words here. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. God is, in this verse, if you notice over here, it's talking about the spirit of counsel has a voice. It will speak to you when you are, you know, uh, stuck in your depressed time and your sad time and you're sitting down and praying, Lord, what is happening to my life? God, please do something. And then you declare the word of God. See, that's how it works, okay? You've got to always be very close to the word of God. That is why it's very critical for Christians to be knowledgeable in the word of God. Many Christians, they pray a good prayer, but there is no word of God based in that prayer. There is no declaration of the word of God. When you pray, make sure that you, Lord, but you said in your word, God, that you will never leave me nor forsake. Maybe you don't know the, the scripture, the, the reference, that's okay. But at least you're saying the scripture. And the scripture has not come from any book, it's come from the word of God, right? So you're saying, Lord, you said, Lord, in your word, God, show me, Lord, what to do. Keep quiet. In no time you will hear the spirit of counsel, a voice talking to you. This is what I want you to do. You know, people think that it's impossible to hear the voice of God. Beloved, I want to encourage you. Please don't think like that. If you think it's impossible to hear the voice of God, then the problem that you are making to yourself is really huge. You will never be able to hear what God wants you to do. And you know, uh, just few few more uh, verses and then we will close. S uh, Psalm 16, verse 7. The, uh, Psalm 16, 1, 6, verse 7. Say over there that He will instruct and guide you. The Lord will counsel you even in the night. So many people, sometimes if they get tensed up, they don't sleep in the night. They don't. Some people don't sleep at all. Some people, I, they don't sleep, but they don't pray at all. They, they while their time out with all the nonsense that's going on in their mind. They keep thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. It says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Amen. God has given me counsel. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Amen. Which, what instruction? Who gives it? The spirit of counsel. When you receive the word of God, by the way, do you know the Holy Spirit will also warn you? Do you know that? So Holy Spirit will not just not keep, keep, make you feel happy and good. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say no to you. Acts chapter 11 verse 11 to 12. Peter received counsel and direction uh, from, uh, from the Holy Spirit. In Acts 16, 6 and 7, Paul was kept preaching from the province of Asia. Because the Holy Spirit disapproved, did not give him permission. You will not go there and preach. Just imagine the own word of God. The Holy Spirit is telling Paul, don't go there. You will not go there and preach. This is in Acts uh, 16, verse 6 and 7. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will also warn you not to go. But remember one thing, the Holy Spirit will not never warn you, don't go to church. It's dangerous. <laughs> don't come with these weird imaginations. Huh? Because what you just said is contradicting the word of God. Whatever the Spirit of God tells you, know, remember this. It will always be aligned to the Word of God. It will always be aligned to the Word of God. But the Spirit of God will, especially when you are evangelizing, for people who are reaching out the gospel and you know, love to share the gospel of Christ to people, sometimes you got to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will tell you, don't tell him, tell him, don't. I'll, the, 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 the next person in the afternoon, that comes to you with this, you will tell him. But you will not tell the others. But you will say, but uh, Holy Spirit, what about the other 10 people? Don't worry. I have plans for them. Your task is for that person. Sometimes we feel, Pura dunya ka bodh mein upar hai. Bohut kuch karna hai. Logo ko help karna hai. Ye karne ka, wo karne ka. So hold on. It is not you. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. God loves every single person in this world. He doesn't want anyone to perish. 
but he wants everyone to receive eternal life, eternal purpose. Maybe you might go to office, you might say, I want to preach, I want to preach, I want to preach. And next day you are being asked to leave. Because you want to preach, no? The joke is that you have told everybody else except your own pastor. And then you come and tell me, pastor, you know what? I've been asked to leave the job. I said, why? Because I was preaching the good news of God. See, there is persecution. See how people talk, no? Foolishly, here. You think God will do that or what? God will not do it. God will not work like that. God will do supernatural things. Amen. But he will not cause damage to you. Yaar. God will never do that. Come on, everybody. God will never cause damage to you. God will never make you look like a fool. God will never make you embarrassed. Because he loves you too much. He that trusts in the Lord shall not be put to shame. You will not be ashamed. I, you know, when I, when I talk to some people who are highly qualified than me, I am never ashamed because they don't know the Holy Spirit inside me is way, way, way outside their intellect, their qualification. All I have to do is trust God. Open my mouth and speak. And they will listen. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Not yours. It's the Holy Spirit. And before we go to the Lord's Supper, Let's just pray and ask the Lord to continue to lead us, to guide us. Father, we want to come to your presence today, Lord. Even as we continue to meditate on the spirit of counsel, O oh God, we pray, O oh Lord, that we sometimes, Lord, are not willing to hear your counsel, O oh God. Because we know the things you say, it's very difficult, O oh Lord. The things you say is very Difficult to follow, God. But that's where the fruits are, Lord God. That's where, you're, that's where you have blessed us, oh God. Lord, all throughout the Bible, Lord, you have got people and servants who had had to do tough things, Lord, that you said in order to see a greater, a greater purpose being achieved in their life. Lord, help us, God, to be ever listening to your voice. Doing what you say, Lord. You said, be not the hearers of God's word, but also be the doers of God's word. Father, help us to obey your word, obey your instructions, no matter how difficult it is for us to follow God. Give us the strength and the ability to believe that we are believing in the powerful God. The God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the same unchanging God in our lives. Master, we ask you that today, that you will counsel us, God. Thank you that you have counseled so many people today, Lord God. Open our ears of understanding, Lord. Help us to receive your word with joy and with obedience, Lord. God, we remember, Lord, you said in your word that do this in remembrance of me. Lord, I pray that you will stretch out your hands and you'll bless this table, God. Lord, we remember your death on the cross. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that you have done for us. Who are we, Lord God, that you are so thoughtful about us, so mindful about us, Lord? Because you have made us in your own image and likeness. That's why you love us so much, O oh God. That you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, God, to die for us on the cross and to give us eternal life. Father, we thank you for setting us absolutely free. We remember, Lord, that you have died, not you, but we have died with you, Lord God. Lord, as your word says that we have been crucified with you, Lord God. Help us to every day when we get up in the morning, Lord, and remind us, sweet spirit, it is not me but Christ in me. So that we will be closely knitted to that eternal purpose that you have for us, Lord God. Father, we thank you for, your, for, for, for this supper, Lord. I pray you bless the bread and the cup. We remember, Lord, that your blood was, uh, was, was completely finished, you said, because your blood has caused uh, a reconciliation, a way out for us, so that we can be accepted in the sight of Abba Father. Lord, we pray and thank you. Even as we participate, Lord, remove every guilt and condemnation from the heart of your people, Lord God. Help us to never give up, a Lord. Lord, if we have sinned against you, we have done things that hurt you, Lord. 
Lord, we ask forgiveness today, Lord. Please forgive us, Lord. We repent of our sins, Lord. You look at our heart, O oh Lord God, and, and you will see, Lord, that we have really repented. What we have done last week or sometime back, Father, we ask forgiveness, Lord. We come through your blood asking forgiveness. We will not give up, Lord. We will keep fighting on, O oh God, because we want to work our salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, I pray that you enable every single person who is going to participate, Lord. Enable them to know that you want your purpose to be achieved in their life. You want us to be holy. You want us to be righteous, God. Father, we thank you once again for this time, Lord. Fill, up, fill our lives with your, with your word, God. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us. In Jesus' holy, precious, and mighty name, we make this prayer. Amen. So those people 